Buenas tardes a todos. Eh, me gustaría de hablar en español, de presentar la, la charla en español, ma como italiano entiendo, entiendo menos el español, ma no, pa, no hablo suficientemente bien. So, la presentaré, los presentaré en inglés y eh, me traducirá el compañero aquí. Okay. So, um, okay. So when, uh, so when uh, in marine ecology, when we speak about uh, phytoplankton uh, or phytobentic microcommunity, we speak um, of, of um, some ecological uh, community that are quite well studied, especially the micro, the, the phytoplankton community. This is uh, for um, different reasons, uh, several reasons. Uh, first of all, because uh, they are, uh, of course, uh, Um, K species, K community for any web trophic um, uh, uh, chain in all the sea, in all aquatic environment. Then also because they are quite diverse. And uh, um, they have other, other important uh, function in the ecosystem. They, they are uh, quite uh, involved in the in dynamics of biogeochemical bio bio cycle and so on. But all these things are, uh, are true for phytoplankton, yes, but uh, uh, it's not true for phytobenthos. So, sorry, <laughs> maybe too much. Veamos qué tal memoria tengo. Cuando hablamos de los phytoplanctons o el phytobenthon, en general estamos hablando de una comunidad bastante bien estudiada, y esto tiene que ver mucho con sus componentes ecológicos clave dentro del ecosistema y que exhiben una gran biodiversidad y van a, van a jugar una serie de papeles eh, a nivel eh, en términos bioquímicos y ecosistémicos. Sí. So, um, if, you, if we consider phytoplankton, the, uh, this microcommunity in literature is well studied, but if we consider phytobenton, this is not true. For, for other kind of reason. In fact, if you consider the main division of plant, of microalga, that, may, that, uh, that, uh, um, that um, constitute the, the microphytobentonic or microphytoplanktonic uh, biological compart, we see that there are many divisions in which uh, there are very, very few species and other in which there are a lot of species. But a, more or less, the 60% of the species are phytobentonic species, so, so species of microalgae that live attached to some substrate. And the 40% are phytoplanktonic species. The, that uh, phytobenton is less studied than en general el fitobenton está mucho menos estudiado que el fitoplancton. Como pueden ver aquí hay más especies, more species. 60% en fitoplancton y 40% en fitobenton. The contrary. 40% en fitobenton, 60% en fitoplancton. When we speak about uh, microfitobentonic community, we can uh, define this community in terms of where they are attached. So, in terms of uh, uh, the host substrate, we can consider different kind of community. Cuando se caracterizan estas comunidades de fitobentónicos, uno puede caracterizar en, rel en relación a qué tipo de sustrato ellos van a estar posicionados. We have, uh, we have uh, epiliton if, uh, if the host substrate is uh, rocks, or epiphyton if there are macroalgae or plants, or, some kind, or in some case epizone if the host organism is an animal. Esto va a depender, por ejemplo, si están sobre un sedimento rocoso, si están sobre macroalgas o si están sobre otros animales. Microfitopentonic community can be also studied in terms of biofouling because uh, they are a biofilm of microalgae that cover some host organism or also a not biogenic substrate as a plastic or a boat or uh, Any, any substrate that is in the water. También puede ser estudiadas eh, como microfilms que van a estar recubriendo básicamente cualquier tipo de componente que esté en el ambiente marino. So we can have a 
two components in biofouling, a macrofouling that is made by macroorganism and a microfouling that is made by microalgae. And these two components are always uh, present in, uh, in the biofilm of, of foulings. So they coexist always. En los biofilms se pueden detectar dos, el macrofouling que tiene más de 2 milímetros, el microfouling con microalgas, y estos, estos dos componentes están siempre coexistiendo en el biofilm. When we see uh, any macroalga or any plant into the sea or in a, in a, a freshwater uh, pond, always there is a, a very, very abundant community of microorganisms, or generally are microalgae, that cover completely the macroorganism. Cuando vemos en ambientes marinos, en ambientes dulceacuícolas, las algas, siempre va a haber una comunidad muy abundante y muy densa de microalgas que van a estar recubriendo estos organismos. So, this, uh, the, the microfitobentos, so the microalgae that cover macroalgal or plants, are quite, quite studied in literature. There are, there are not so much study as, as phytoplankton, but uh, there are a, a, a certain number of uh, publications in literature. El microfitobenton está más o menos estudiado no tanto como el, uh, phytoplankton. Como el phytoplankton, pero se conoce algo. For example, this is what you find on a seagrass. On seagrass you have, uh, you have that in each leaf you have this kind of micro algal biofilm, these are diatoms, that cover all the, all the leaves. So the quantity, the biomass of microalgae can be at least the same of the leaves or of the plants in terms of general biomass. Aquí se puede ver en hierba marina cómo está recubriendo estas microalgas, en este caso diatomeas y la diversidad puede ser muy alta en relación a las hojas donde están posicionadas. So, the same we can find in animals. Any animals can, uh, in theory, support this microalgal biofilm. Uh, the, but in case of animal, micro, micro, micro biofilm, so micro zone, is, less, is really less studied. We know that there are Uh, this biofilm on any different invertebrate and vertebrate in, into the sea. But there are no studies, few studies. En animales puede pasar lo mismo y en todos estos grupos de animales se va a encontrar también estos microfilms. Sin embargo, este grupo es muy poco estudiado a pesar de que se encuentra en todos estos grupos. And of course, uh, this biofilm, the, the microfitopentos, is a, uh, a, a very, it's a very complex community that has a dynamic, so you can also study in dynamic way. You, you can study from the settlement to the uh, development of a very complex ecosystem, micro ecosystem, of course, on the host organism. Estos microfilms en general son muy complejos y son ampliamente dinámicos y se pueden estudiar de una manera dinámica teniendo en cuenta the, 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 com the complexity. Tomando en consideración la complejidad in the, in the develop, in the, in the development. en el desarrollo de este microfilm. So, why study, uh, why study microfitobentos? Because uh, uh, microfitobentos is present in every aquatic environment from very cold environment as Antarctica, Arctica, or in uh, the temperate, uh, tropical, and in any kind of host organism, from coral to seagrass, uh, mangrove, and any, or any host organism. ¿Por qué estudiar estas microcomunidades? Porque primero están presentes en todas las comunidades marinas, desde ambientes muy fríos como los polos hasta ambientes tropicales, y en todo clase de organismos, incluyendo corales. And 60% of microfitobentos is made by only one genus of micro, only one uh, division of microalgae that is diatom, diatomeas. Y el 60%, el 60 de eh, todo esto está compuesto por principalmente diatomeas. Este, eso. <laughs> These are diatoms. Diatoms are microalgae, very, very peculiar, because are made by a silical cell wall that make this organism very, very competitive because uh, are uh, 
quite resistant or, or to any grazer in the, in, 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 in the environment. So they are very strong microalgal, so they are also plants, they do photosynthesis. Las diatomeas se caracterizan por tener un esqueleto silícico que las hace muy competitivas y fuertes dentro de este ecosistema. El esqueleto, el eh, eh, silica shell, uh, is also a very good taxonomical marker, so we can recognize at the species level almost the 80% of diatom just considering the um, electron microscopy. Uh, of, uh, image of this organism. El esqueleto, la concha de sílica, es además muy útil y muy fácil para utilizar en taxonomía y se puede reconocer una gran cantidad de estas especies con microscopía electrónica. Perfecto. Oh, oh, oh. So, in uh, a classical but uh, modern datum biofouling research, there are may normally three different aspects that we study. A taxonomical aspect, a microecological and biogeographical aspect, and also some more applied aspect as a biomimetic, bioinspiration from this shape to biotechnology. Dentro de estos estudios de biofilms en diatomeas, hay tres áreas principales que se estudian. Por un lado está la taxonomía, por otro lado, la microecología y la biogeografía, y por el otro lado, las aplicaciones, como por ejemplo en bioingeniería biomimética. Microecological study can be done using uh, generally electron microscopy. This is the main problem with the, the study of microfitobentos because the dimension of the cell of these diatoms are very, very small, are smaller than the, the, the dimension of the planktonic diatom. Generally, are more or less 20 micron, and they can reach 50 micron. So the electron microscopy is necessary for all the, this kind of study. Para los estudios de estos organismos, normalmente se va a requerir microscopía electrónica porque son muy pequeños, entre 20 y 50 micrones, en comparación con eh, plantónicos que son un poco más grandes. With electron microscopy, you can not only recognize all the cell, but you can also counting the cell on the community, just preserving the community as they are in nature. And when you're counting, you can do microecological work and you can uh, just compare all the different community in different host organisms, giving an idea on, of uh, how this micro community can adapt on their host organism. A través de la microscopía electrónica no solamente se puede identificar, sino también se puede contar a estas diatomeas y puede, se pueden hacer estudios microecológicos comparando cómo las diferentes comunidades están estructuradas dependiendo de en qué tipo de organismos de superficies están posicionados. This kind of study are very very few in literature because needs electron microscopy, a very very time consuming use of electron microscopy and uh, needs also to uh, to counting directly the cell from people that are skilled on, uh, of course, taxonomy of diatom. Estos trabajos son pocos porque por un lado se requiere un trabajo bastante intensivo en microscopía electrónica y por otro lado se requiere personas que tengan buenas habilidades y conocimientos para poder hacer el reconocimiento de las especies. Of course, when you have a a, a, when, when you do this kind of morphological study, sometimes you can try to adapt the very complex uh, morphology of this organism to biomimetic things. This is a, a classical, uh, how, a classical um, um, result that you can have from a microecological study that is applied to a different field, biotechnological, bioexpression. Bio cuando uno hace este tipo de estudios, uno puede aplicar los resultados a otras áreas como por ejemplo la biomimética y la biotecnología a través de adaptaciones de los estudios previamente hechos. The idea of the study that we propose here is to study the, the diatom microcommunity on 
vertebrate and in particular or turtle. Uh, we know that there are many different items on different kind of vertebrate. All these genus are normally are generally specific genus, new genus. On on uh, there are on dolphin, there are on whales, there are on uh, lamantine, and there are on turtle. Este es el estudio que se propone en este caso y la idea es estudiar las comunidades de diatomeas en diferentes vertebrados acuáticos y particularmente en tortugas, teniendo en cuenta que estos diferentes géneros, en algunos casos nuevos, son particulares a grupos específicos como eh, manatíes o ballenas. So the, um, the study, the, um, the study that we, we, um, that we propose is a, is a study that is started two years ago and uh, which uh, in different country and the idea is to study for the first time the community of the marine turtle because there are, there was no one information until two years ago about the, co the micro community of diatom on the different species of marine turtle in different parts of the world. Este es un proyecto que empezó hace dos años en diferentes partes del mundo y cuyo objetivo principal es conocer la estructura de las microcomunidades, pero en las tortugas marinas, algo que previamente no se conocía. We made, uh, we made some, uh, we made first observation on different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, turtle species and uh, uh, we started with the Lepidocalis olivacea in uh, Uh, in Costa Rica and in Kelonia, with Kelonia Midas in the other side of Costa Rica, Costa Rican um, uh, coast uh, in Tortuguero, so in Caribbean side. Esta investigación primero empezó en Costa Rica, primero con la tortuga Lepidocalis olivacea y luego con Kelonia Midas. Y con la tortuga verde Kelonia Midas en la costa caribeña. We, we also decided to compare Kelonia Midas from another part of the world in, uh, in, uh, in the Persian Gulf, where there are important, very, very, very big colony of Kelonia Midas, and to compare the micro-community of this uh, turtle with the, the Kelonia Midas in this side of the world, in, uh, in uh, Caribbean. Y luego deci decidimos comparar las comunidades de de Kelonia Midas, la tortuga verde que viven en el Golfo Pérsico con las comunidades estudiadas en Costa Rica. Okay. The, the, the method this way is, uh, is quite simple. We generally take piece of the carapace of the, of the, um, of the turtle and we, we just put the, this piece with the, you see this green, this green is the diatoms in, uh, in formalin Then we prepare for electron microscopy because uh, we have to uh, deshydrate and, uh, of course, uh, cover with gold just to see the image in electron microscopy. La metodología para esto es relativamente simple y lo que se hace es tomar eh, láminas del caparazón de las tortugas, eso se corta y se pone en formalina y se prepara a través de, eh, se les deshidrata y se les cubre con oro para poder hacer la observación microscópica. You can, find, you, can, you can see what there is on the carapax of Colonia Midas. Uh, it's, uh, uh, sorry, of Lepidocalis olivacea. The carapax is totally covered by a, a biofilm of, uh, of uh, a lot of different kinds of diatoms. And uh, uh, all these diatoms, at least uh, almost all these diatoms, are quite new. Aquí pueden ver lo que pasa eh, en el caparazón de Lepidocalis olivas y hay toda una microcomunidad de diatomeas y muchas de estas diatomeas son completamente nuevas. We differentiate also in grow form the diatom. So we, we consider the, the diatom that live just attached, the, the diatom that live in erect way and some diatom that are motile. In this way we have also the structure of community. And here we see that this kind of different genus in Uh, classified for grow form. También vemos aquí la estructura de la comunidad con algunas diatomeas que son móviles, otras diatomeas que están uh, agarradas y otras diatomeas que están en diferentes posiciones. In, uh, oh, we can also uh, in uh, in this uh, so analyzing the community we can uh, we can have some data just uh, I don't want to enter too too deep but just to have an idea on uh, On Lepidocalis oleacea, we have a community made by more or less 30 species, 
with the abundances uh, for each species that can, can go from uh, 6,000 to 40,000 cells for millimeter, for square millimeter. That is a lot. It means that are totally covered by that. Aquí pueden ver, sin entrar en mucho detalle, una estructura de cómo van estas comunidades y ustedes pueden ver que pueden haber hasta... Semila, 6,000 to 40,000. Hasta 30 especies y que en algunos casos pueden cubrir, tener una variación de cobertura entre 6,000 hasta... 50,000. Hasta 50,000 células por milímetro cuadrado. Some of, some, of the, um, some of these species are completely new. These are new genus um, that was described for, Kelonic, for uh, Lepidocalis. And uh, um, uh, the, the, the very interesting thing is that this genus seem adapted to the turtle species because we found the same genus also in, the, in Kelonia medias that we uh, analyzed from Iranian uh, coast. So in, in uh, It seems specific genus for Kelonit. Estos, por ejemplo, son dos géneros nuevos y una cosa particular es que parece que estos géneros están adaptados al caparazón de las tortugas, pues de los mismos, eh, de los mismos géneros se encontraron en la costa del Golfo Pérsico. Just to, to have an idea of, uh, uh, on the different that we found, So in Lepidocalis olivacea we, we have more or less 20 species, that, that is, now it's 30 because uh, we found new species. And if you see, in Kelonia midas, that is uh, quite, quite uh, uh, it's a totally different species, we have more or less a similar community in terms of species. But if we go in, uh, in another uh, part of the world, for example in Iran, Kelonia midas has less species. So there are, we are now, Uh, trying to understand uh, how the, the, this community uh, can grow on the different species and in different locations in the world. Aquí pueden ver una variación de las especies que existen entre las diferentes especies y por ejemplo en la epidocalis olivacea aquí está 20 pero ahora con las nuevas especies han descubierto hasta 30 pero pueden verse la variación entre colonia midas del tortuguero y colonia midas de Hankan Island donde varían entre 22 y 12 y ahora están estudiando justamente cuáles son las razones para estas diferencias. The abundances can change a lot. For example, in Kelonia Midas, we don't have the abundances of, the, of the cell that we found in Lepidocalis. The cells are, are very are few, are more or less not, not so much, more or less, uh, less than 1,000 for, for millimeter. Y también las abundancias pueden cambiar, y por ejemplo, en Lepidocalis es mucho más abundante las células que en Kelonia. The community structures are different. It's what is very, very strange is that uh, in uh, Kelonia Midas, in, uh, in uh, um, Tortuguero, we have more or less the same structure of community of Lepidocalis olivacea in Ostional, so in Costa Rica. But in Iranian, we have a totally different community structure made only by a Rex diatom. So this means that uh, there are other factors that affect, that uh, change this community structure. Aquí se puede ver la comunidad de las estructuras y un aspecto interesante es que eh, las del tortuguero con las dos comunidades de Costa Rica son mucho más similares que por ejemplo en el Golfo Pérsico, donde de hecho están más que todo constituidas por diatomeas rectas. We have not, not clear taxa and of course there are other, other, um, other, um, uh, other kind of uh, of, uh, of, of um, uh, parameter that can affect. For example, the presence of a matrix of uh, mutilage. We found that often in, uh, when, for example, in Iranian sample, where the temperature is very high, and also the, um, uh, the um, uh, not, not only the temperature, but also the salinity is different, is very high before the evaporation. We have this kind of matrix of mucopolysacker polysaccharide that cover everything, so reduce the community. Aquí también pueden haber variación en relación a la matriz que se le encuentra y dependiendo de la temperatura y la salinidad puede haber estos mucopolisacáridos que están recubriendo por completo la comunidad. So, uh, to conclude, 
we have any conclusion? No, because uh, this study is a preliminary study. We, we can see that uh, there are uh, different turtles, that, that different turtle species may host different community. We don't have this, uh, we don't have still the possibility to do this, to, to, to say this. And maybe there are also uh, many new species that are associated to, to specific or uh, population of the item, of, uh, of turtle. So the idea is to, to try to, to take here also here in Galapagos with the, the help of uh, the Galapagos Science Center and uh, of the, uh, the turtle teams, this kind of study to, to, to see the community of Galapagos and also the community of each island of Galapagos. De manera general, se puede ver que hay variaciones entre las comunidades de diferentes especies de tortugas y todavía se quiere conocer aún más y es por eso que van a entrar aquí en Galápagos para empezar estudios de este tipo. So, the study is just in a preliminary phase and, uh, and uh, of course, will be continued. Thank you very much. Okay. Tenemos preguntas. Mi pregunta sería, ¿cuál es la función real de estas diatomeas? Y por lo menos, o sea, si en unas hay menos o hay más, ¿hay algo que o sea, se relacione con, con la salud de las tortugas? O sea, si, vali, si hay menor, entonces ¿hay alguna afectación para las tortugas o no? In, in teoría, the, uh, in theory, the, the diatom community are just commensal organisms. They just use the turtle as a... Um, as a substrate. So there is no a specific uh, action of this biofilm on, uh, on turtle. Uh, this is not true for any other, from other organisms, for example, for coral or for macroalgae or for plants. There is a, a competition between the, the micro community of diatom and plant, but not for animal. Of course, uh, could be that the that to, that uh, turtles that are not in very healthy condition can can uh, support more more abundant uh, micro community because they they try to eliminate this thing, but there is no a, a real a real uh, uh, linkage between these two things. De manera general, las diatomeas son solo comensales, así que solo van a estar viviendo encima. A diferencia de otros organismos, por ejemplo en los corales, donde las comunidades de diatomea sí pueden entrar en competencia, eh, pero sí podrían haber cambios en, eh, dependiendo de la, de la salud de las tortugas. 